Hello and welcome back to Scribble and Dibble. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, finding my art style digitally, specifically the coloring aspect. I've done a video on this for traditional line art and um, drawing eyes because I changed my art style a little bit and now I'm going to be doing it for coloring. So coloring digitally has been my biggest enemy. It's been the thorn in my side. It's been my downfall. You know, like anytime I want to create a piece, it's really something that sets me back to like feeling like an amateur artist because like my skills and my liner and like everything else is where I want it to be, but my coloring hasn't got there yet. But I finally been able to get it there. So I made this video um, in my first process, in my first process, which I'm showing you now, what I would do is lay out the flats. Um, I'd create a layer just of the skin tone, then I create separate layers with, on a clipping mask um, of just the flats. I add in color using a multiply layer and I turn it really low, so low, I meant shading, not color. I add in shading on a multiply lever, level that's so low you can barely even see it. And uh, <laughs> um, as for blush and... Um, like shading on the face I would use this um soft round brush um and yeah it just it was something was missing like it was almost there but it wasn't there um it, it was just off you know and I think that one of the reasons that it was off is because I kept going back and forth with myself about how much detail I wanted to include and the where I wanted the detail to be included so it's like I was trying to mimic some artists that I liked, but I didn't like like their style for what I wanted to do. So I just kept like going around looking at reference material and being like, oh yeah, this is what I want. But it wasn't um yeah, it wasn't the right fit for me. And that's what kept um like throwing me off every single time. Like I'm I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is this artist that I'm looking at sorry <laughs> I always yawn when I talk a lot this artist that I'm looking at they have everything I'm looking for and so this is what it's gonna do this is like this is what's gonna take me to that next step but I wasn't even factoring in how that would look overall like with my sketching process and with my line art process am I the type of person who wants all of this detail the way that I thought that I did like do I want to include hyper realistic shading do i want to co include completely simplified cart um more on the cartoon side something that maybe would work more for animation and the key for me was that i stopped like there's so many artists that i was looking at and they had it but when i looked at tiny angry ghost um they're on instagram they're on twitter when i looked at their art i was like this is it and I don't know what made it different from everybody else. I'm going to look at the pictures now. And like I have a board on Pinterest. And I look at it and I'm like These, this is what I want to draw. Like this is what I want my art to look like. But there was just something. Like something that was so. Like okay so for example I'm going to give you an artist that I like. And I thought I wanted my art to look like theirs. Etc. Art. I liked the big shapes and everything and the shading. That's what I wanted, you know? Um, sim still very similar to Tiny Angry Ghost. Uh, I'm going to find somebody else. Okay, likely hood art. Now that's pulling me over to the more hyper-realistic side that I don't want to reach and I could never reach. Well, not that I don't want to reach, but I don't believe that I could reach it in the way that I want to. Um, Jux Jax is another person who I really admired and wanted to um, wanted my art, my shading to look like theirs because it's like so simplistic. But the thing about Tiny Angry Ghost, <sighs> all the shapes are so clear to me in exactly the way that I want it to be. 
Like, I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but if I were to look at one of, of por a portrait that they drew, it's exactly like the shading is exactly how I want my shading to look. The highlighting is exactly how I want my highlighting to look. It's like spot on. And like there's certain times where they draw and it's more like there's more shading, more detailed, more um, soft uh, cell rendering or whatever. But I'm more of a hard cell person. Is that what it's called? Cell shading. Cell shading versus soft cell shading. So like just regular not adding like an airbrushing and stuff. So yeah. But it was like it just it clicked in my mind and I was able to do it for this drawing and I think I'm going to be able to recreate it. <clears throat> Sorry. And I'll explain my um, new process now. So what basically what I do same like um, basic flats blah 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 and then for the shading on the face, I do um, a soft airbrush on the cheeks instead of using a round brush and then blending it out. Um, I do, I erase the line under the chin, like the line art line under the chin, and I decide to use um, the color I used to shade underneath the neck instead, I meant underneath the chin instead and on the neck. And I don't blend it out. Like, I don't use a soft brush. I keep it hard again. I add a lot of shading from, like... Like, if your hair is in front of your face, I'll add the shading line under, under there. When I do clothes, I focus on big shapes. And instead of using a multiply layer, I simply use a darker color. It just makes things easier for me. Um... And then I remember to add all the de details at the end. Like, I want to offset a few things like, um, what's it called? Oh, I'm showing you the time-lapse replay because there was a lot of, like, you could see my face a lot. And I didn't want that much on glare. So you could see my process a bit better. But yeah. Um, yeah, I remember to add, like, the noise, the chromatic aberration that I do with the line art. Um, the overlay layer that I do with, like, some textured papers. And I remember to add like the highlights and the white rims and the, you know, everything that I want to add to make a drawing look exactly like I think it should look. And that just like those finishing touches is what pushes me over the edge because everybody does like this over like the rendering layer where they'll like put their line art over painting. That's what it's called. Like they do over painting. I'm not an over painter. Like I'm not a painter at all. So... I like figuring out that I need to <coughs> oh my gosh <laughs> I literally just couldn't breathe for a second I don't know what happened but like figuring out that I need to take those final steps so that my drawing will look more complete is really making me hopeful about the future because I want to start drawing backgrounds more and stuff and making my pieces a lot more complex and that's what I'm gonna be working on this summer um, getting out of school, I'm just gonna want to try to create as many pieces as possible, detailed pieces with backgrounds and, you know, something more enticing than just doing portraits. <sighs> because I believe it's time to push myself to that next level. Um, tell me about your art process below in the comments. What has changed? What do you want? to change um um i just suggest looking at references over and over doing a lot of trial and effort error taking your time like it's not gonna click immediately it's literally like i made a video talking about this i think and i already changed my mind on what i want to do i don't think i'm gonna change it like anytime soon because this is really more what i was trying to get at like this whole time like th from the beginning this is what i was trying to get at and i wasn't i was missing the mark which is incredibly frustrating, but you'll get there. Like, you can't give up. Maybe you need to step away and take a break. But at the end of everything, you're going to get it. Like, I 300% believe in you. Sorry, I was yelling again. <laughs> and I, yeah. I just, I'm feeling very good about my art. And I'm excited to get back into filming and everything. And I have a lot of videos planned. And I hope that... You'll like them, and I hope you like how this turned out, and that you find this video helpful and useful. This is the before, how I used to shade, 
and then that's how after like there's just some dimension to it i don't even know how to explain it she just feels more 3d i guess and um yeah this is me showing the before again why did i show it twice oh i was showing you i added that rim that white rim to distinguish their figures so yeah and then i added the chromatic aberration around their bodies and like the hair shading i just think it looks dope yeah okay bye have a great day